There's been a lot of media attention on U.S. trade policy in recent weeks, but history tells us trade wars haven't been uncommon. Canada, Mexico, China, and the EU have been recent targets of U.S. tariffs. As a result, they've all declared their intention to retaliate with tariffs of their own, and most have also filed complaints with the World Trade Organization. We spoke with the University of Nebraska agriculture economist Wes Peterson about the ongoing U.S. trade war. Uh, originally, tariffs were used to raise government revenue. We didn't have an income tax, so we got our government. We financed our government with tariffs, uh, and so tariffs have been around forever. The countries have always taxed foreign stuff, and, and, and so on. Um, but it has led to these, these big problems where you have a trade war, and, and I think the big point is that nobody wins a trade war. You always lose. Uh, uh, because, first of all, consumers pay more uh, as you put on uh, tariffs. Uh, and also, the uh, people forget about this, but there are a lot of industries that import inputs to, to uh, and so they end up then having to pay more for their inputs. And, and so, uh, so the first thing is countries always lose, uh, just, just w without thinking about the possibility that other countries may retaliate. This is it's bad for the U.S. to have uh, high protectionism. But then the other part of the deal is that once you put on these tariffs and start protecting your industries, other countries retaliate. Uh, that's exactly exactly what's going on now with, with uh, China, for example, a major market for U.S. soybeans uh, has started to, uh, or is threatening to put on tariffs uh, on soybeans. Uh, soybean prices have gone down as a result. Uh, China will be getting its soybeans from Brazil and Argentina. Uh, and, you know, it, this will hurt uh, uh, farmers in the U.S. We, 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 there was a conference recently where the, this group, uh, uh, somebody from the group made a, a presentation. This is Farmers for Free Trade. You you could look it up. It's at farmersforfreetrade.com, and, and their goal is to uh, advance uh, the, the show to people the importance to agriculture of, of free trade. So, uh, I, I think that's 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 the the real crux here. The, the World Trade Organization uh, was started in '95. It incorporated the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which is started after the Second World War. They, they both function by getting uh, countries together to negotiate uh, uh, trade liberalization, the lowering or elimination of trade barriers of all sorts. Now, I initially, agriculture was not in this system, and so during uh, the, prior to 1995, there were a lot of conflicts over agriculture. We had fights with the Europeans over bananas and chickens and hormones and beef and so on. Uh, with the World Trade Organization, the, the dispute uh, settlement processes were, were strengthened. So basically what countries do is, is uh, they agree on rules for international trade and then they make commitments. They say, we, will, uh, we commit to lower our tariffs to this amount. If a country thinks that, that uh, another country has violated its commitments, then there's, that can trigger the dispute settlement process. Typically what happens is that the countries that bring a case uh, generally win and the countries against whom the case is brought generally lose. That's been the case in the United States. About 90% of the cases we've brought against other countries we've won. About 90% of the cases brought against the United States we've lost. And that's the same for most other countries as well. The, the question about what's going to happen at the WTO, I think it's, it's probably pretty clear. Uh, the other, the, all the countries on which, where we've put tariffs, they have all responded by saying they're going to raise tariffs on, on, on the U.S. as well in retaliation. That's typical of a trade war. Uh, and, and so um, we will probably lose those. Uh, the, the grounds for the steel tariffs was national security, but that's kind of ridiculous because the tariffs are applied to our allies, Canada and Europe and so on. Uh, the t uh, tariffs on China uh, is because of currency manipulations and intellectual property questions. And some of those are legitimate concerns, but, but we will probably lose on that because we apply the tariffs. Whereas if we'd gotten together with our Europeans and, and Canada and so on and filed a complaint at the WTO, that would do two things. We'd win. Uh, and uh, secondly, it would strengthen the, this global system that we've been working on for the past 75, 80 years to, to uh, have a rules-based international trade re regime that, that will be beneficial to, to everyone. So how we grow the economy is, is uh, again, you know, it, it's just crazy. Think about um, we had some good trade agreements in the works. The tra Trans-Pacific Partnership would have brought Japan and opened that market to our beef exports. 
And so that was thrown out. The transatlantic trade and investment partnership was uh, thrown out, and, and, then, and, and except that in just recently there was an agreement between the European Union and the U.S., which essentially is reactivating the, the tra trans transatlantic trade and uh, investment partnership, TTIP, uh, that, that was under negotiation prior to this administration. So, so those kinds of uh, negotiating trade agreements, uh, actively trying to strengthen and participate in the World Trade Organization, and other international uh, institutions, this is, this is the way that you grow and become prosperous, uh, not only in the U.S., but around the world. Uh, and going, the more prosperous countries are, uh, the more um, likely it is that we'll be busy doing business with each other rather than going to war. Uh, and, and I think that there's a long history that if you've got uh, open markets and, and uh, free trade and so on, uh, that, that you, it's worked beautifully in Europe. So basically, uh, I think you know, the more uh, economic relations you have, the more likely it is to have uh, world peace, and that's a good thing too.